All right, thanks to Steve Osinsami for that. And joining us now to talk more about this watershed moment is media and pop culture expert John Murray. John, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Anytime, Lindsay. So Cops, is it's one of the very first reality TV shows. And while it's drawn many people to the profession, the show has been criticized for distorting that reality through the lens of entertainment. Would you say that that's a fair assessment? Absolutely, Lindsay. You know, there was a documentary podcast called Running From Cops that was really able to uncover some really nefarious actions going on behind the scenes with this show. From them doing unethical things like not granting people their bail until they sign release forms to appear on this show, to them... Uh, uh, using excessive force just to make sure that the show was more enticing and also doing some things that were considered unconstitutional with their level of force and the way that they manipulated storylines with alleged criminals. And so that type of behavior being shown on television and the influence that we know that cop has, cops has had with other people wanting to be cops, it was the blueprint uh, in teaching people the all the bad ways about the police and how they operate. And so because of that, the show had to go. And also talking about this this show, Live PD, the show's creator and host, Dan Abrams, who's also the chief legal analyst for ABC News, he defended Live PD, differentiating the show from Cops. Take a listen. Uh, Cops was a show that provided a highlight reel of amazing moments that happen in policing. Um, and, you know, there were a lot of complaints about Cops over the years. I have to tell you, we didn't get a lot of those same complaints. Why? Because we were live. We were showing the beginning, the middle, and the end of the story. Uh, we had a really diverse group of police officers uh, who were out there uh, doing the hard work that police officers do every day. But look, we also have to accept that this is a new time. And what I had been hoping was that live PD could have become a great venue for a national discussion and actually action. And actually see change implemented. And, and John, would you agree with that, that it matters how the story is being told, or is it the same type of glorification that, that people are so critical of? Well, it definitely matters how the story is being told. And listen, I have great respect for Dan Abrams. I love his legal mind. I love all his contributions to ABC. But here's the truth, Lindsay. You know, when Bill Cosby's uh, sexual assault revelations were made, uh, his shows were pulled from TV. That just didn't affect him, but it affected the cast and everybody was attached to him. The same with Stephen Collins on Seventh Heaven, when it was uh, revealed that he had had underage sex with underage girls, um, his show was pulled from TV. And Harvey Weinstein, you know, his company and every business venture that he was attached to went bye-bye. So the unfortunate thing is Dan Abrams was producing in a genre that people just don't want to see right now. It is a day of reckoning for people of color, and police-involved shootings with unarmed people of color, black people in uh, particular, because this moment is about us and Black Lives Matter. Unfortunately, he was a casualty of that. And I hope that Dan will continue producing content, and maybe he will find another way to tell the story of police that's more healthy and not reflective of the bad things and the trauma that people are experiencing in America. And, and let's talk about... Gone with the Wind, for example. HBO Max has taken it down, but today filmmaker Spike Lee told our colleagues on The View that films like Gone with the Wind and Birth of a Nation should be seen, citing a slippery slope of mo removing these films from catalogs, but suggesting a notice of context before the film. In your opinion, what's the right way to do this? I think Spike is on the money with this. You know, when we go to watch most shows now, Lindsay, we get a disclaimer of the nudity, of the, uh, the language, of the violence. And I think now networks have a responsibility to do a disclaimer during these shows to say, listen, this was uh, not done in proper historical context. What you're watching, please look at it through a lens that's appropriate for its viewing pleasure. Because these are historic works and people should be able to view these things. But you should know what you are signing up for. You know, when um, there was a Scientology documentary on A&E with Leah Remedy, and in between and out of every commercial break, they ran these disclaimers telling you the other side of the story. And so I think we have to reshape the way we look at these products and how we offer them to consumers. And just a couple of days ago, the co-creator Friends said that she regrets the lack of diversity in that show. And the irony being that, that Friends is sometimes called out for, for borrowing from the show Living Single, which featured, of course, six black friends in New York City and premiered the year before Friends did. Have we seen a change, would you say, in the 25 years since shows like this were popular? 
we've definitely seen a change. And listen, Friends was to live in single what Elvis Presley was to Little Richard. Like, we, sometimes we just have to call a thing a thing. And listen, one of my close friends, and I got permission to tell this story, Sherry Shepard, former co-host of The View, she was one of the few black faces that was on Friends, her, Aisha Tyler, and Gabrielle Union. And Sherry was on Friends at a time where you sent out postcards to let people know, hey, I'm going to be on TV. And on her postcard, she sent out a color photo of herself, and she said, Friends gets a little color. Well, she also sent that photo to Marta, and she got the, uh, the postcard, and was never asked back on the show. Mm. So I don't know how oblivious she is to the fact that she didn't have a lack of diversity and she wasn't aware. I think when you know better, you do better. And I hope moving forward, she makes better decisions to be more inclusive and diverse in the actions that she chooses and the projects that she chooses to produce. When you know better, you do better. That is for sure. John Murray, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We appreciate having you on the show. Anytime. And